Dress up is fun for many ages, in particular kids. Rather than making a full-size costume, make them for 18-inch dolls, a wonderful way to nurture imaginative play. Joan Hines is our guest again, and she joins us for the second episode of Sewing Costumes for Dolls. What are we going to do today, Joan? Well, hi, Nancy. Sewing for Dolls allows you to try a lot of different techniques and use a variety of fabrics. The cowgirl outfit is the case in point. Fringe and a cow print are not the norm for sewing. Yet with this costume, your little girl and her doll will win first prize in the make-believe rodeo. Doll costume dress up. That's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Not only sewing doll clothes great for the little girls in your life, but these are fun to make. And Joan is going to show first one and then a second one of the cowgirl option. Yes, the first one that we have here is the cowgirl in cow print with some fringe. And we have a vest and a simple um, elastic waist skirt. Now, the pattern pieces for the vest is very simple. Yes, it's just one pattern piece. It's placed on the fold and you would cut out one for the vest and one for a lining. And in this example, we've used a contrasting print and the preparation for the lining is pretty simple. All you need to do is press the shoulder seam uh, towards the inside and I've done that on all four of the shoulder seam mm -hmm. pieces. And then you are going to sew them together and we can see in this next example that I've stitched around the neckline, the armholes, and then around the body of the vest. Leaving an opening for turning. Right, and you can see that this seam has been stitched down. So here we have the same fabrics and you do a little clipping in the curved areas and trimming off on the corners. Right, and then right. You know, it takes the most time to turn this right side out. Yes, that's the most difficult part. So right. we did that in advance. Yeah. <laughs> and here you can see what it looks like on this side, um, that, that we have it turned. And on this side, we need now to close the shoulder seam on the lining. So let's just take a look at the, the open seam. And that extension is right here that has not been folded under. You meet those right sides together and you sew them together. So that then, as Joan's sample shows, you tuck that seam inward and then sew it by hand closed. So it's a narrow shoulder seam, but for a doll, it's a great way to work at it. Yes, yes, it doesn't take very long at all. And then you can trim it with the pink fringe. Speaking of pink fringe, I have this on the skirt, and this is a great way to make a skirt for a doll. Uh, this is 40 inches in length, and you can make it as long as you'd like. Mm -hmm. about five inches and we've surged the edges so or zigzag just clean finish those edges now this fringe you know John I have to say I'm not a big fringe person but this would be fun to sew yes indeed every cowgirl outfit needs it <laughs> so you just straight stitch so for dog clothes straight stitch and a zigzag that's all you need so just stitch that all along the edge then press under the casing, and about a half of an inch worth is what has been pressed under and then stitched on this side. Now for elastic, the standard size of elastic for 18 inch dolls for the waist is about 11 inches? About that, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So rather than cutting 11 inches of elastic, Joan and I both like to recommend marking the 11 inches, and this we've drawn through the casing, we plate the elastic through the casing with a bodkin, and then after sewing this, then we can cut it off. You know, this sometimes could easily pop and go back through the elastic and then you have to do right. it again, or the casing. Mm -hmm. So the skirt would be finished by just meeting right sides together and sewing the center back seam. Probably wouldn't make a regular skirt this way, but for doll clothes, 
this is perfect. Right, right. And I have another example here showing um, different fabrics. I have this red, white, and blue print and that I combine some rickrack instead of the fringe. So you can find anything out of your sewing room and, and quickly make up a doll costume. Even the belt, this ribbon with a little yes, closure. Yes, yes. Um, you can see here the, the, the uh, buckle here is, is a mm -hmm. jewelry finding. And that's the cowgirl. Witches don't have to be scary. This doll is donned in a mod style Halloween outfit, ready to give a little girl pleasant dreams. You too will have enjoyment with this costume, learning clever ways of adding trim and quickly finishing edges. We can't possibly show you every technique of this cute outfit, but Joan, point out some of the trim and the accent details of your great costume. And this is just simply another dress. It has a top and a skirt, but what I've done is I've added a bow at the waist, and you can see this trim here on the sides of the front, and that is simply an old technique that is just weaving rickrack together. And then carrying that theme through the kind of the pink rickrack on the skirt hemline, it's tiered. Right, right. There's two layers and it's offset and the edge is cut with a pinking shears or a rotary cutter and you don't have to finish the hemline at all. Eliminating all that step. So first of all, to put the trim on your front, you just cut a piece of fabric. The size of the pattern gives you that we'll find in the book that accompanies the program. And you can stitch it down, you can fuse it down. Right, right. And once that's finished then, you need to make the trim and stitch it to the side of the insert. Now you mentioned this technique working with rickrack is, is old, but it's new again. But itty bitty pieces of this rickrack, the mini rickrack, you weave them together. You have to anchor it down. And I cannot do this upside down for your viewpoint. So I, you'll do this at home just the way I'm doing it by crossing one on top of the other, making sure that you have anchor them and then you later can just top stitch around the edges or along the edge with clear mm -hmm. thread. Right, right. And then the next step you need to do is to sew the side seams, or the shoulder seams, excuse mm -hmm. me, and we've got this here in the lining and then the um, top, front, and you'd and meet back. right sides together. Mm -hmm. And we'll stitch around the neckline and the center back and the corners are, are turned to the bottom. After you turn this right side out, you're going to be stitching in the sleeves. Now the neat part about the, the sleeve is that the cuff and the cuff section is not a ruffle, but it's a circle, a circle that's been cut. And again, we're going to use the pink and sheer concept. Now on my fabric on the board, I've begun to cut. I had the pattern shape traced. It works out better to trace it just use a circle and then you can see I've used this pinking edge and then you can cut the side seams and you can kind of rotate and, and cut around the opening. You wouldn't have to do this part with your pinking blade but we'll, we'll just finish the job. Then this stretches out so that it fits the lower edge of the cuff and it then is stitched to that lower edge. Just the right sides are met together and you can top stitch it. So it's not gathered, it's just that circle to make a flounce at the end. Now we did gathering in the first program, but let's show you that again. Gathering best for doll clothes is to zigzag over a cord or zigzag over the bobbin thread. And here I'm just quickly zigzagging over a cord mm -hmm. to make this work, to make this a quick little job. And then you anchor the cord on one end and draw it so that you get gathers. And you can set that in your sleeve. Now, Joan, this design of this skirt is very clever. Yes, it's two pieces of contrasting fabric, and they're offset, so the points are in different spots. <laughs> and the edges are turned, or the sides are turned and stitched, and then you would gather the top edge, just like you did on the sleeve. We already have four pin marks in here to get the quarters, and then I've quarter marked, or Joan has quarter marked, mm -hmm. excuse me, the, the top of this, and so then you meet your quarter marks together, and so, how about that? We got that already done. Sew the edges, and this is a flat construction technique, so you're not having to sew in the round when you get to this edge, and you keep 
gathering that till it meets the edge. And as you turn that around for the camera to see, sure, the back I is sure open. Can. Easy for little girls to undress. For you. And you can see that this is open all the way down the back. So it's easy to sew and easy for the little girls to put on their doll. So in making doll costumes, you can have creative trim, creative edges, no hemming, by using a rotary cutter, a pinking shears, and it has a lot of creative fun and look to it. Leap tall buildings in a single bound, well, not really, but it's an option for play. Joan's superhero pattern can create those playful thoughts after you spend just a small amount of time doing the stitching. Now again, we're going to share with you some of the unique ways of putting this costume together, these little pieces and three parts here, Joan. Right, we have a top and then it has a skirt and, and just a belt that goes around the middle, of course, and then we have a cape. So that's four pieces, I'm Th sorry. That's four <laughs> pieces, right, right. And the cape is, is uniquely attached because it just has a snap here at the top and I can pull that off and mm -hmm. so you can allow easy dressing of the doll. Sure. Now the same kind of pattern pieces are used as we used for the comparable to the witch, but because it's sleeveless, share with our viewers how that's sewn. Right, right. We've got uh, the pattern pieces here. You need front and backs. And I've used a contrasting lining here. And the first step you need to do is to stitch the shoulder seams here. And once that's done, you would place it right sides together. Mm -hmm. And not only will you stitch around the neckline and the backs after you've wrapped the corners, but you now will do the armholes as well. And when you turn this right side out, it takes some time to get it through those little narrow seam allowances, but right, that's right. why we have opted to have that done for you. So here's one that's done, but now that side seam's kind of fun. Right, right. We have that finished on this side, but a way to to stitch it so that you don't have any raw edges is to open it up and you would simply put the front together and the lining sides together. This is four-handed sewing. Right, right. And it's pinned and you would stitch. And here's a close-up of that stitching. You just go right from the bodice to the lining all in one swoop. Right. So once it's turned then, this is what it, it will look like on that side. Yeah, so it's all continuous and the armhole has been stitched. So you can then finish the lower edge. Mm -hmm. You just turn, turn it, on, turn turn it, it under, under. Mm -hmm. top stitch. You don't have to worry about fancy stitching. Just, Not on this one, no. Just do it all by machine if possible. Mm -hmm. For the skirt, the skirt, it's just one pattern piece a one placed on the fold for the front and on there's a seam allowance for the back so that you can have an, an opening and you can see the side seams that have been stitched so it's it's practically finished at this point and then there's a little waistband but don't think garment sewing waistbands just think of doll sewing waistbands here we're doing it in a contrasting color and just stitch it to the top and then it folds around, and I'll show you the back. It's just encasing that edge. It doesn't have to stretch because that doll is one size, and we just made it to fit that. Now, if we look at the finished skirt, here we have it in the same color. It's just been turned under, and then a hook and eye or hook and loop tape can be placed there. It's, it's pretty easy and can be done quickly because the hem is just turned under after surging or zigzagging and top stitch it into place. So can't, can't beat that. Now the cape uh, you have here, Joan, we mm -hmm. have lots of little pieces here. The cape is double layer and then a bias tape at the top and then the snap. So we have the sample I love the fabrics you found, all these satiny fun fabrics and that zigzagging over the cord, which we sh over the bobbin, excuse me, which we showed you in the first program. So it's a way of quickly making some component pieces. But you can also lengthen this skirt. Right, and once it's lengthened, you mm -hmm. can use it as a circle skirt or a poodle skirt. This is a beautiful doll dressed in, in her gray poodle skirt, and you even get the outline of the little poodle on there, so you can fuse that. You don't have to sew it on, just fuse right. it on. So once you have a pattern for a doll, you can make it many different ways so that it has a lot of creativity. Longer or shorter, you have dress-up costumes. 
Next, the cute as a bug costume. It's amazing what a little polka dot fabric, pom poms, and sheer fabric can turn into. This costume makes me wish I were a little girl once again. This, believe it or not, this costume is made very comparable, Joan, as you pointed out to me, this little top from the hero costume. It doesn't look like this little costume will look like it's made like this one, but why don't you show to our viewers, there, there's some sim similarities. Yes, yes, we're going to be constructing it exactly the same way. The only difference is, and you can see with the wings here that are attached, we will have to stitch a seam here at the bottom because we need to include the elastic. Now granted, the pattern pieces are shaped differently because of the body shape of that ladybug, but they're comparable in the neckline, shoulder, and armhole. Right, right. So the first thing you need to do is to cut um, lining and the front of the costume, and then you will be stitching the shoulder seams like you've done with all the others, and then we'll be going around the, up the back, around the neckline, and you'll go down the back, but you can see here there's a dot marked on the pattern piece and you need to stop right there. Mm -hmm. Then you will stitch the armholes as well. So the same principles except you're leaving some opening where you'll soon see it will become a seam. Right, and now we have turned it. Yeah. Okay, honestly, this takes the longest time. Right, right, it sure <laughs> and we're, does. We're not showing you turning it right side out because you got to go through this opening and then you press it so that these edges are really sharp and crisp. I had to be honest, you know, full disclosure here. Okay. It takes okay. a little time. It does, it does. So now you can see that we have that section at the bottom that's open. And what we're going to do is take the front and we're going to pin those two together. and then we're going to do the same thing with the lining. And we'd have a pin here, and then you would stitch from uh, the edges to the center. And my goodness, we have a sample for that. Here it has been stitched from the, t from the lining to the center, the print to the center, and this is just a por partial portion of a sample, excuse me, but there is that back seam has been stitched. Right, right. So. Then the underarm seam is sewn in the same way we did with the superhero costume, meeting the fronts and backs, mm -hmm. and you'd sew one long seam. So it's just a little bit longer seam allowance. It's the same thing. That's what I like about your techniques. It builds one on top of the other. The lower end edge, excuse me, edges have been turned under and a casing has been made so that elastic can be put through the casing to gather this up. And we've left a long opening. You wouldn't leave this large opening, but just to show you that we pressed under and you'd leave an opening maybe two to three inches in mm -hmm. length, Joan. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even that. How about two inches? Two inches sounds good. The wings. Netting, we in the first program, if you're with us for the first episode, which you can rewatch online if you'd like, you have several layers of netting. Right, right. I think there's four. And then trace through it with chalk. And you have to kind of go over this a couple times. Right, right. The netting is so dark that it's hard to see through. Use whatever method you can find that you'll be able to see. And here at the sewing machine, I'm placing 30 gauge wrapped wire and zigzagging over the wire. And you'd use maybe a marking pen to darken the wire. Right, right. And after you zigzagged over this, then you just trim, cutting out along, or really on the in outer side, not on the inside, but so you're not, here we go, cutting a little bit differently, but you cut around the edges, leaving on eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch of the netting. And this wire manipulates, and if we take a final look at our gal, right. um, sh she has the wings that have been tacked to the body. You can make the same outfit only in, in orange and uh, you have a pumpkin, so you can see that without the wings and a little different coloration and a cute little face, you have another costume idea for your dolls. Great job. Great ideas, Joan. Thank you.
During today's Nancy's Corner interview, learn to become part of a new way of thinking about quilting, one that values our skills, talents, and the beautiful things we create. Welcome Sam Hunter, promoter of We Are So Worth It, who joins us via Skype from Beaverton, Oregon. Welcome, Sam. Hello, Nancy. Really good to see you again. It, it's a pleasure to talk about this and to value our work, whether we're sewing or quilting. Tell our viewers how you started the concept, We Are So Worth It. It started when I was on an online group and uh, one lady came on with a, a really beautiful quilt and, and was asking our opinion on what she should charge. It was a baby quilt that had a lot of handwork on it. Mm -hmm. And she was wondering if $85 or $100 was the right threshold. And I, I kind of, I, I went on a rant. Um, <laughs> and I, I sort of explained it out to her that her time was really valuable and that I believe that we are just as important in our skill sets as skill sets like plumbing and carpentry and, and the guy that fixes my car for $100 an hour. Uh, so I sort of laid this all out in a blog post and um, it got a ton of feedback. And sure. that's when I realized that there's a tribe out there that really, really wants this information. So I've been on a campaign not only to get people to look at this, but to build the educational resources for them. And I think education is the most important part of it. And you have developed a couple of uh, pieces of paper that I think are very valuable to help people value their work. And, you know, so, as simple as a project sheet, just yeah. writing down hours. Yes. The, the first thing that I said to people is, you know, you need to know what's in this project in terms of materials mm -hmm. and hours. And, and then people said, well, I don't know how many hours that took me. It's like, okay, well, let's create a project sheet so that you can sketch down as you work on it. I keep them in the same bag that my projects are and I ah. keep everything in really big Ziplocs. Um, and so that piece of paper is right there when I pull the project out and go, oh, today's date, I was working on a binding. I put in about an hour. Um, and so I've got that running total for the project. The other thing it helps us with, if you're in the if you're in the place where you can bid on a job, somebody comes to you for a commission, mm -hmm. you can then go back and use this information to make estimates. You know, I happen to know it takes me about two hours to hand bind a quilt. Um, sure. So now I know when I build that in, two hours. Sure. And a lot of times I guesstimate or I think I know mm -hmm. what it takes me, but it maybe takes a little bit longer depending <laughs> on the fabric or their variables, yes. right? Yes, definitely. And then when you sell your product or give it, even if you give it away for an insurance value, you have developed an invoice that uh, helps people determine, okay, put down what you're worth. Yes, absolutely. And I do think that right now, claiming that worth is still somewhat difficult. We've got a lot of people who are used to that mass produced item in the big box store, mm -hmm. and they honestly haven't held a handmade quilt. They don't know what they're holding. And I think education is the key. I think if we can show them what's actually part of that. And even if we're selling it for less, say, okay, you're getting the friends and family discount for 300 bucks off here. It, it mm -hmm. still changes the conversation. And that's the conversation I really want to change. Well, didn't you sell a quilt or an acquaintance have a quilt where they sold it, presented this and then was paid more? Yes, yes, I've had that happen a couple of times. People have written me and said, you know, I wrote down the number and then I discounted it to the agreed number. And uh, most of the time it was family members that the family member paid a little more. Um, I've also had people who've used that invoice as the template for a commission bid. And when it was all laid out, there was no argument in, within the commission. Uh, the sure. person just wrote the check. Um, where as she had felt that if she had just sort of pulled the number out that there would have been perhaps a haggle going on. You know, as, as people who sew and quilt and embroider, we don't always think that, oh, we point out the mistakes. Oh, oh, yeah. oh here's a mistake or here's something. Yeah. And that is something so not worth it. <laughs> yes, so not worth it. We need to stop having that self-deprecating language mm -hmm. about the art that we make. We really do. And but that's another worksheet. <laughs> yeah, he, there, you, there you go, Sam. Well, this is, this is enlightening, and people can get your printouts so that they can help value their work on your website. Yes, and absolutely. All the resources are there. That's wonderful. And I thank you for sharing your passion and giving us encouragement so that we can go on and value what we create. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity to share it with you, Nancy. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Sam. 
And for those of you watching at home and you'd like to re-watch this interview, you can go to Nancy's, nancyzeman.com and click on Nancy's Corner. And then, of course, you can go to We Are So Worth It and find Sam's website. You can watch all the latest programs, about three seasons worth of programs of Sewing with Nancy. Join us on social media, Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest, all these areas, so you can be a part of the sewing community. Thanks to Joan Hines for being our guest on our Doll Clothes program. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Joan Hines has written a book entitled Doll Costume Dress Up that is the reference for this two-part series. The book includes a CD with 20 printable patterns for doll costumes. It's $18.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2811. Order item number U7871, Doll Costume Dress Up. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.